Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to my review for Elysium. Finally, it's here. Elysium, the second movie directed by Neil Blumkamp, the guy that did, of course, District 9, one of my favorite movies of all time. I just rewatched it yesterday and it's still fantastic. I watched it maybe eight or nine times and I love it. District 9, I watched it about nine times. <laughs> Look at that. But I'm serious. This movie I could not wait for. Matt Damon, Jodie Foster, Charlotte Copley from District 9, and of course Neil Blomkamp. The trailer itself looked very, very action-packed, very uh, emotional too. It looked like a great story, amazing visuals. What did I think of Elysium? It's been getting pretty lukewarm reviews to be honest, which is kind of sad, but you know me. Hey, I love Man of Steel and I got pretty bad reviews, so hey, I'm a cool guy. I, 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 I'm here to have a good time, okay? And maybe cry. So, did I like this film? Let's talk about the story. The story for Elysium is set in the faraway future. I think like 2154, I think exact date. I could be, I could be wrong, but it's set in the 2100 somewhere, and it's in the future, because Earth is a crap hole. It, like, no one wants to live there, and whoever lives there are the people that are poor and unprivileged, and the people that are privileged live on Elysium, this big ring in the sky, which I'm going, oh, a ring in the sky that's a planet, Halo, Neil Blomkamp, come on, man, um, do it, just do it. Anyway, the privileged live there, and of course we follow ex-con uh, Max, I was about to say Matt, because of course he's played by Matt Damon, who is an ex-con trying to become, you know, a better person in a way. He wants to go and, uh, you know, just work, you know, make money, I guess. Uh, he wants to make enough money so he can actually go to Elysium, because he really wanted to go there. And of course something really bad happens at his work, where he actually gets radiation poisoning, and he's gonna die in five days. This is a spoiler, this is set, this is what sets up the plot. Max has to now go to Elysium in a space shuttle and go and get one of the little machines there that uh, pretty much cures everything and cure himself and of course, you know, kill a bunch of dudes, you know, destroy stuff and whatever. The only way you can do this is uh, by getting an exoskeleton. An exoskeleton around him, which is pretty much like a, a badass mobile mech suit and he just he uses that and he kills dudes and he has to go to Elysium and oh boy, <laughs> oh boy. I love this movie. I do. I do. Like, I don't know what people were complaining about, but I really thought the story here was fantastic. The writing here, I will admit at times can get a little cheesy, and there's parts where I didn't really care for it. Uh, there's parts in the, uh, in the movie where it shows flashbacks to Max and his uh, pretty much long, long time girlfriend on and off it seems like. Uh, Frey, played by, uh, I can't remember her name. Um, <laughs> I can't remember, sorry. But um, they keep showing flashbacks to that and I'll admit that stuff is kind of cheesy and some of the dialogue at times isn't that great, but everything else is fantastic. All, all the rest of the dialogue, all the story elements, the main characters are extremely likable here. Matt Damon is fantastic, very sympathetic. You really feel for him. And at first you actually really like him because he's that kind of badass dude that's, he's tough, but he's also funny and he's kind-hearted and I really like that dude. I, I do. I like Matt Damon in this film. I think he's fantastic and his character is really likable. Um, you have, of course, Jodie Foster who pretty much plays the, the bad... She play, she's the, I guess, the main bad guy. I, I don't want to say anything, but let's just say she's the main bad woman in this film. And she is the villain and she is okay. She's not the greatest villain out there, but she does a good job of making herself seem like she just does not care about anything. She only cares about whoever is on Elysium. That's it. She does not care about Earth or anything. And in a way, that's good because we really want to hate this villain. And she doesn't really have any redeeming features. She's just an, a nice queen. There you go. And she is great in that role. Charlotte Copley is a douchebag, but he is awesome in this film. He is so badass. He just goes around and does whatever he wants, says whatever he wants. He is a, 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 an asshole, but he's not, not even a redeemable one because he's not. He's not at all. But he is a likable douchebag. He is an asshole that you can get behind because he gets things done. He doesn't care, and I love that. And he's great in this. Who thought that Charlotte Copley could actually be a badass, but he is a badass here. The rest of the supporting cast is great as well, with people like Diego Luna and uh, William Fickner, who I love that dude. So, great cast here, great, great characters, really like them all. But of course, a lot of you people out there are going to go see this film because of the action and the special effects. Maybe Matt Damon, if you, you know, if, if, you, if you like him. 
Uh, he takes off his shirt once in this film. It looks good. But, um, <laughs> anyway, but the special effects and the action, let me talk about the special effects. What I love about Neil Blomkamp, he doesn't throw all these special effects in your face like, oh, look at this one, look at this one. District 9, he couldn't really do that because, of course, um, the budget was pretty small. It was only $30 million. But here, he can. It's a $120, $30 million budget. He could throw all these special effects in your face like Michael Bay, but he doesn't. He holds back. He shows you really cool designs for these robots, amazing-looking uh, practical effects at times, and just great, great action, too. Really well-done action, even though I will say sometimes the camera gets a little disorienting with the shakiness. The special effects and the action just mix so well together and the special effects are so seamless. Like the robots, the spaceships, Elysium itself all look amazing. I didn't ever go, eh, that kind of looks a little fake. Never. There's parts where robots just blow up and you see just parts of them just fly up in the air. Like, ooh, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. It is. It is. It's really good looking. So this is one of the best looking movies of this year, just like District 9 was for 2009. So again, Neil Baumkamp definitely knows how to do visuals. And like I said, the action, while at times can get a little shaky, are both emotionally impactful at times. They can. Um, very tense and, and violent. Come on, man. District 9 was violent, and this one is violent. Now, it's not as violent as District 9. District 9 had maybe someone blowing up every two minutes. Here, you get about five people that blow up, but it's really good. There's a part where a dude's face pretty much comes off. His head just blows up, but the first thing you see is his face just, like, implode into his freaking head, and it, ooh, geyser blood everywhere, and it's awesome. And, of course, you have a lot of really cool weaponry, um, a lot of them blow up real good because of this weaponry, and it's just an awesome, awesome, epic movie. And what I also love is that it's not an action-packed movie. For the most part, there's a lot of just quieting down, and Alice Braga, I forgot her name earlier, I remember her name now, Alice Braga is the girl that uh, Matt Damon really likes. Uh, just him and her just talking a little bit, or just parts where Matt Damon uh, just talk, just thinking about him dying and stuff and just not contemplating with it at all because he doesn't want to die. Just scenes like that, just slow parts are just very well done, very well shot, and then of course the action and the special effects come in to make it really enjoyable without making the movie completely boring because of all the talking. If that makes sense. It doesn't. Let me just wrap this up by saying this. The emotional parts work completely here. The characters are really likable. Even though I think Jodie Foster isn't the best villain out there, I think she's still good here. Uh, Char Charlotte Copley is badass here. There's a lot of violence and it's used perfectly here. It's not too much to make it seem a little silly or anything. The uh, action, while sometimes can get you know a little shaky, is really good here. Um, also, the story, while fantastic, there's parts where I didn't really care for it, uh, particularly the flashback scenes, and the special effects are some of the best I've seen ever in a movie. So I'm going to give this movie a 39 out of a 40, so close to 40, but if, if, the flashbacks were taken out, and of course the shakiness was gone, or just at least a little better, you know, just the camera work was a little bit better, then I would give this a 40 out of a 40. This is a fantastic film. Definitely go check it out. There you go. There's my review. Thank you, and goodbye.